OU High School Lecture of Algebra 51 course, um, section 4.2, get an unofficial lesson. Um, but here we go, this is on solving multi-step equations. So we've done like 4x plus 2 equals um, 8 before. And so with these, we just have to solve for x, and so minus 2 from each side, this would cancel, and then we'd be left with 4x equals 6, divide each side by 4, this cancels out, we're left with x equals 6 over 4, and reduce that down to 3 halves, okay? So here, it's multi-step kind of like this, except for sometimes they have things on each side of the equation. So instead of all of the x's being on one side, you have like an x on both sides and numbers on both sides. So you need to solve for x um, with it being on both sides. So you want to get to one side, you want to get x to one side, and then solve for x. That's kind of how we usually do it. So here they have 4x plus 2 on this side of the equal sign. Okay. So see how they have four x's, one, two, three, four, and they have two ones, okay? On this side of the equation, they have one x and they have eight ones, okay? We've got to figure out what x equals. Um, and so we're going to start with removing one x rectangle from each side, okay? Because we want to get the x's on the same side, so we're going to remove this one and remove one of these, okay? So now we're left with three x. 3x's, right, plus 2, equals 8. Okay? So that's what we're left with there, which as you can see down here. Now we want to um, get the x's alone, so we're going to do subtraction again. Okay? We're just like we subtracted an x from each side, we're going to subtract 2 from each side. That would look like this algebraically. Okay? And if we did it with these boxes, we're going to remove 2, and we're going to remove 2 from each side. So everything's equal. Now we have 3x's, and we have 6 ones. So 3x equals 6 is the next step. Okay. And here, we line up each x with how many ones lines up with those x's. So if we put these 6 ones into 3 groups, each group would have 2. So x would be 2, right? Because 2 would be equal to 1 plus 1 here over here. And if we put in 2 for our original spot, ignoring that we crossed it out, 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2. Then we add all of these numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10 on this side if x is 2. And on this side we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 equals 10. So we had to find the value for x that makes this side equal to this side. And we figured out that that value is when x equals 2, then this side equals this side. So solving for x, found out x was 2. It's multi-step. Okay. And here's the last problem that looks like algebraically. Um, so we have 4x plus 2 equals x plus 8. We minus x from each side. The x's cancel. It gives us 3x plus 2 equals 8. Then we minus 2 from both sides. So we'll do the first step, minus x, minus x. It's this, and then from there we have to minus 2, and minus 2. Okay, then we have 3x equals 6, and then we divide by 3, divide by 3 to get x alone. And x would equal 2. Okay, so... So what is the first step when you see x's on both sides of an equation like this? Okay, The first step is to get x's on the same side. Or whatever variable it is, like if it's a y or a c or whatever. So we want to get the letters on the same side. 
whatever we're solving for. So that's our first step. Then our next step is to solve for x from that point. Okay. So we're going to go through the examples here. Um, and you want to name exactly what you're doing with each step. So here, what's the first thing we're going to do? Well, we need to get the x's on the same side. See how there's an x on this side and an x on this side? How do we get the x's to the same side? Well, we can't because this is inside a parenthesis. Okay? So we need to do the distributive property first. So 5 times x and 5 times 5. Remember, whatever sign is with that number, you keep it when you're distributing this through. Okay, So I want to go 5 times x plus 5 times a positive 5. Okay. So right now, 5 times x is 5x, which is there. 5 times 5 is positive 25. So 6x equals 5x plus 25. Great. Now I can get the x's on the same side. So I'm going to do subtraction. I'm going to get these x's out of here by minusing 5x to this side. And I'm going to minus 5x to the other side. So I'm left with regular x. 1x equals 25. OK, so remember, just the first step whenever you're doing these problems is you want to get the x's to the same side. And again, we're stuck with a parenthesis here with an x inside the parentheses, so we need to get rid of these parentheses. And the way we get rid of those parentheses is the distributive property. So 3 times 4 and 3 times positive x. So 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times x is 3x. So 9x equals 12 plus 3x. We're going to minus 3x from each side. We're left with 6x equals 12. Then we have to divide each side by 6. Okay, and these 6's cancel, we're left with regular x equals 12 divided by 6, which is 2. Alright, this next part they're showing you basically what we did here, when we divided by 6 to get x alone, okay? That's another way of they're saying that is multiply, multi, mul a multiplicative property of reciprocals. Remember, reciprocal sounds like crazy, but it's just not that crazy. So, multi multiplicative, multiply, reciprocal is remember like it's like basically one over that number. So, if you have a number six, your reciprocal is one over six. If you have one sixth. It's like flipped upside down, so your reciprocal is 6 over 1. So a reciprocal means that whenever you times it by its, uh, when you have a number and you times it by its reciprocal, it equals 1. Okay? So if I have 1 third, I have to say, okay, what can I times it by to make the product 1? And it's just the fraction flipped upside down, 3 over 1, because then whatever is here cancels out, and we're left with 1 over 1. Right, 1 times 1 over 1 times 1. So this property, when we, you know, like if we add minus 3, it's just the, it's just subtracting. But if we divide by 6, they call it the multiplicative property of reciprocals. So just remember what reciprocals is helps you understand that term. Okay, here's a summary of multi-step equations. So first is simplify each side of the equation by moving, removing parentheses. Okay, so that's what we did up here. We remove the parentheses first. Okay. Step two is get all the variable terms, which means like the letters, like x's, or whatever you're solving for, on the one side of the equation by doing the same operation to both sides to keep a balance. What that means is we just go down and solve for our, we want to get like our x on each side. And we do the same operation, so we're going to subtract 3x to this side, subtract 3x to that side. Divide this side by 6, divide this whole side by 6. So you have to do the same thing to each side of the equation. Okay, and then after we get 
the um, variables on one side, we get the constants on the other side. So in our example back here, we got the variable over to this side by minusing x. Now we need to get the constants over to this side on the other side. So we minus 2. Okay. So the first step, here's your view. Remove the parentheses and simplify like that. Next step is to get the variables on one side and the um, numbers on the other side. Okay? Just like we're getting variables on this side. And we got numbers on the other side in past examples. Number three is always show your variable in the positive form. So you want, like, is for example, if you had negative 2x equals 2, we want x to be positive. We don't want to just divide by negative 2 and get negative x equals 1. We want the positive variable. So we have to divide each side by negative 1. So that would give me positive x. This is negative x, but negative is positive equals negative 1. So we want x to be positive, our variable to be positive. OK? So remember that sometimes you can solve for x and there isn't an answer. So usually there's a discrete answer, but if there's not an answer, it means that no values for x makes the statement true. So if we're looking at a problem, you know, and there's no value of x that makes this whole thing true, then it just means no solution. Usually there will be an answer, though. Okay. And number five, sometimes you may solve for a variable only to find the variable gets canceled out. You end up with a number equaling itself. That would mean that all numbers would make the original equation true. Okay? So, for example, if you had x plus 5 equals negative No, I don't know. I'll have to think about this for a second. Okay, for example, if you had 2x plus 5 equals x plus 2 plus x plus 3. Okay, so if we solve for this, um, we would eventually get down to 5 equals 5. That's because 2x plus 5 equals, if you add these x's up, it's 2x. If you add these numbers up, it's 5. Okay, and if we minus 2x from each side, both of these sides would cancel out, and you'd be left with 5 equals 5. That means whatever, x could be any number. x could be 10. And if you plug it in here, it would be 25. If you plug it over on this side, it would be 25. So if a number equals a number, then x can be any value. All right, here's our last example. 3x minus 5 equals 3 times x minus 5. So remember, our first step is to break down the parentheses. And we have 3 times x, and we have 3 times negative 5. So keep that negative sign with it. Okay. Um, now, if it was a negative 3 times a negative 5, it would be positive 15. But since it's positive 3 times negative 5, it's negative 15. Okay. So 3 times x is 3x, positive 3x. 3 times negative 5, positive times a negative is a negative. So negative 15 minus 15. Um, so, and here you go, negative 5 equals negative 15. Because if you minus 3x and minus 3x, these cancel out, and you're left with negative 5 equals negative 15. That's not true. Negative 5 does not equal negative 15. So there are no values for x that make that statement true. On the opposite end of things, here we go. 5x equals... 
minus 15 equals 2x plus 3x minus 5. If I have 3 times x and 3 times negative 5, to break down the parentheses in step 1, that would give me 3x right there, minus 15, because positive times a negative is a negative. And then I have 5x minus 15 equals 2x plus 3x minus 15. So we're going to combine these like terms first, okay? Because you can add x's to each other. You can't add the 15 to these x's, but you can add 2x plus 3x together. So that'd be 5x minus 15. You minus 5x from each side. This cancels out. This cancels out. And you're left with negative 15 equals negative 15. That means that all solutions work. All real numbers. All right, that's it. Good luck.